Thank you for coming. We have already reached the appointed time and we have formed a quorum. Let's invite the administration team to join us. In fact, we have five um, UN sanctioned resolutions, so uh, we'll try our best to deal with as many of as many of them as possible. We have uh, uh, Liberia, uh, Congo, and also Somali, and Yemen. And of course, we are all familiar with these. They have been announced uh, by the UN Security Council and then through the CPG, we have been given the instructions for the SARG to enact legislation for that purpose. And uh, such legislation has already come into effect. But then we also have to discharge our duty as the legislature to look at uh, the uh, provisions to see if um, everything is in order. So thanks to the administration team for coming. We have four representatives from the administration. They are Ms. Carol Yoon, Deputy Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Mr. Raymond Wu, Principal Assistant Secretary. And from the DFJ, we have Ms. Alice Choi, Senior Government Counsel, and Ms. Michelle Fong, Acting Senior Government Counsel. So first of all, let's deal with CB bracket 1, 1092, stroke 13 to 14, bracket 01. That's the UN sanctions Liberia regulations 2014. So there are two notices. One is the repeal regulation, and the other one is the UN sanctioned Liberia regulation 2014. So uh, over to you, Ms. Yun. Please uh, walk us through this. Thank you for inviting us to the meeting. First of all, on the UN sanctioned Liberia regulation. So um, Liberia is uh, a country in the western coast of uh, Africa, but then uh, given its support uh, for the uh, uh, for the anti-government forces, uh, the UN Security Council has enacted a number of re resolutions uh, to extend the sanctions against, including the ban on arms uh, supply and also uh, uh, transition and so on. So as the situation in Liberia is still not stable, that's why in December December 2013, uh, the UN adopted uh, UNSCR 2128 uh, to extend the sanctions against it. And then um, in March 2014, we received the instructions from the uh, CPG asking us to uh, fully adopt uh, UNSCR 2128. That's why, if you look at the regulation when compared to the 2013 UN sanctioned Liberia regulation, more, the, the provisions are more or less the same. As Hong Kong's uh, trade with uh, Liberia is very limited, that's why, as far as Hong Kong is concerned, the um, sanctions against uh, Liberia would not pose too much impact on Hong Kong's uh, trading position, and I'll defer to um, the to Mr. Wu, who will give you. Uh, to, I'll defer to Mr. Wu, who will give you more details. Well, every year for the uh, UN SCL that will be uh, extended uh, or enacted and. Uh, or so on and so forth. We understand that the provisions are more or less the same, but then we also understand that there might have there might be minor revisions, uh, whether or not uh, it's under the UN resolution or sanction, or the DFJ might have uh, made some technical amendments. So um, there are some revisions. Well, as you were the one responsible for drafting the regulations and so on. So please do highlight the amendments so that we will be able to know where the amendments are. And if you do not highlight the amendments, then we can only um, go through uh, all the provisions clause by clause, and that would be a waste of time. So can I solemnly invite the Policy Bureau and also the DFJ to help us in doing this? Because as far as the legislature is concerned, we do have a marker copy, but then in the past, uh, the usual practice, well, for other policy bureaus, uh, they would do this for us. So they would inform us as to the differences uh, between the new regulation and the old one. So please do discharge this duty because it's the duty of the executive. And our legal advisor has also worked with the administration with regard to the Liberia sanction regulation. So there has been some correspondence. and. Um, our legal advisor has also raised some technical issues with the administration, so I'll defer to the legal advisor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I noticed that well, in the subsidiary legislation, well, the name Liberia 
there's a formal name that is um, uh, the uh, short form is Liberia, but then um, there is uh, the formal name, which is the Republic of uh, Liberia. But then you've chosen to use only Liberia in both regulations. So I wrote to the administration to ask if uh, the administration will be using the long name in the formal title of the regulation while using while using only the short name in the brief title, because I noticed that uh, in the UN sanction. With regard to Iraq, under Cap five seven three or three five three seven A, concerning the uh, Iraq regulation, the short term or the short form form was Iraq, but then in the long title is called the Republic of Iraq, and I also noticed that uh, there are three ordinances in the laws of Hong Kong calling Liberia. The Republic of Liberia, including the um, the patent ordinance and also the trademark um, ordinance and also um, the registered designs ordinance. So they all call uh, Liberia the Republic of Liberia in those three ordinances. So can the administration explain to us why is it that um, in the um, regulation that we're scrutinizing there has been a different approach? All right. Thank you um, for your question and uh, observation. Well, all along we follow the terminology used um, in the UN um, sanction, and according to the well, since 2011, the UN has been imposing this sanction against uh, Liberia, and the resolution in the UN sanction has referred has referred to Liberia as uh, Liberia all along. That's why. We have adopted uh, in the local pro uh, legislation this name, and we also noticed that uh, in 1997, in the UN uh, publication on the names of countries, uh, well, Liberia can be called uh, interchangeably as uh, Liberia or the Republic of Liberia. That's why, uh, if we adopt the international laws uh, perspective, uh, both names would be effective. And all along, we've been using the name being used um, in the UN sanction or resolution. With regard to the assistant legal advisor's observation, that is, uh, there is another legislation regarding Iraq and how it's called. Well, that was uh, in the first batch of uh, UN sanction regulations uh, enacted in 1997. And at the time, well, it was uh, used to replace another piece of legislation enacted in 1990, and uh, the order enacted in 1990 used the name Re Republic of Iraq. And that's why, back in 1997, we adopted the same name. But then after 1997, the regulation was not subject to any further amendment. So the, over uh, the overall approach is that uh, when we deal with UN sanctions and how they are to be applied in Hong Kong, well, as far as possible, we will follow the name used um, in the UN resolution. And uh, all along, we have adopted this approach. And therefore, with regard to Liberia and its regulation, we have also adopted the same approach. That's why in 2011, well, with regard to all regulations uh, involving Liberia, we've been using the name Liberia um, following the practice um, in the UN resolution. All right, any supplement or any questions? Well, in the laws of Hong Kong, in different pieces of legislation, we have references to the Republic of Liberia. So I'll invite the DFJ to think about it. Given the fact that you have so many different ordinances uh, calling Liberia differently, so how should that be dealt with? Yes, uh, you might not have caused any confusion, but then you will have to come up with a principle which is consistent so that people will have uh, something to follow. Yes, Mr. Ipok Him. Thank you, Madam Chair. I tend to view it uh, this way. That is, we have followed the UN sanctions and resolution in the description of Liberia. And if that is the way that they have used uh, to describe Liberia, I think it's better for us to follow. And just now, we have heard the administration explaining that in the past, uh, well, the other name was used. That's because, uh, um, well, there was a certain rule to follow before they called it uh, differently. That being the case. If it's so clear, then even if we use the name Liberia without 
the reference to the Republic of Liberia is okay because we are following the practice in the UN. So, Deputy Secretary, can you tell us categorically whether or not uh, that's indeed the case? Yes, uh, Mr. Wu or Ms. Yun. As far as Liberia is concerned, we have followed uh, uh, the term used um, in the UN resolution, and uh, they use uh, Liberia in this resolution. That's why we've been using the name Liberia in our, leg in our legislation. So you have to be consistent. The reason why we have brought this up, that's because recently the DFJ's uh, law drafting has uh, committed uh, some typo mistakes, and therefore there was misspelling and even the uh, uh, the misprinting or whatever. So we don't know whether it's um, just a typo or that you have followed a new rule. That's why we think it's better to raise them with you. So so long as you're clear about uh, the logic or rationale behind it, and then you will follow the principle thoroughly in your in all your uh, legislation, that will be okay. Okay. If there are no further questions, then we'll move on straight to the regulation. We will go through the regulations to look at uh, the new amendments. So, Mr. Wu, are you going to walk us through the amendment? Yes, thank you. As Ms. Yun said, for the 2014 regulation, basically in 2013, we have um, an, an, uh, a repeal legislation or a repeal regulation that's more or less the same, but then we'll highlight the uh, amendments for members' information. First, on the commencement date, well, Clause 6 and Clause 11, uh, we have this uh, commencement date. And when compared to the repeal regulation, we have already updated that. Originally, it should be 21st of uh, March 2013. And since the original regulation has been repealed, and therefore the new regulation will come into effect uh, on the 21st of March 2014. So any questions? Next, about the interpretation. So basically, it's uh, identical with the repeal regulation. The only difference is uh, the 2018 resolution. So the, the reference uh, has to do with the resolution that we're going to implement. Originally, is 2079. And uh, that's uh, what uh, the 2013 regulation were to implement. But then given the fact that we have got a new re UN resolution, that's why we are changing that. Which is what's the uh, number? Now is that uh, twenty one twenty eight? Because just now I heard you say is that twenty eighteen? No, it's uh, twenty one twenty eight, not twenty eight twenty eighteen. And then uh, clause three, when compared to the twenty thirteen re repeal regulation, we have not made any further amendment. And then uh, sections three and four. Or clause three and four is just to prohibit uh, certain personnel and also the sale or transit uh, of a certain um, materials, uh, uh, including arms and so on. But then there has been no substantial change to clause three. And clause five is about uh, assistance uh, to persons uh, um, being active in Liberia and so on. There has been no change at all. All right, clause six. Prohibition against uh, making available funds, etc., or dealing with funds, etc., to certain personnel and so on. We have not made any change in that either. And then clauses seven and eight is about the prohibition against uh, specified persons. Um, so uh, they will not be allowed to enter or transit in the SARG or in the HKSAR, other than a fifteen twenty one resolution. And uh, that's Resolution 1521. It involves uh, Resolution 2128. And uh, in the 2013 uh, regulation, we have used uh, Resolution 2078. And we now change it to 2128. And also in Clause 7, there is another change. That is uh, the uh, Resolution 1521, Para 4. And uh, we also have the reference to Resolution 2128. That's again an updating. Next, uh, Clause 8. We haven't made any uh, revision to um, Clause 8. Well, actually, there are some um, legal terms or jargons which are contained in Clause 8, which are quite unfamiliar. It's creation of peace, stability, and democracy. Well, 
this is um, quite uh, uh, unfamiliar to us. So I think you are following the UNSC resolution, clauses 9 to 11. So this uh, have to do with licenses. Section uh, clause 9, section 9, uh, 9 1, we have made an amendment. We have deleted the 20. Um, 13 uh, regulation we have there is a clause 3 in that um, regulation we have deleted that because with um, the UNSC resolution also made that deletion any questions uh, section 10 we have also deleted a notification requirement in the 2013 regulation no, because we ha don't have that regulation um, or notice requirement anymore. So in 10.1, we have deleted um, subsection 3 because that has already been deleted. Section 11, we haven't made any changes. No change to um, section 12 either. Section 13, no um, revision either. Section 14, no uh, changes either. It um, outlines investigation powers Section 15, no amendment. Section 16, no amendment. Section 17, no amendment. Sections 18, 19s, um, power to detain aircrafts, and so on. Uh, from In fact, from uh, clauses 18 to 22, we haven't made any changes. And then 20, 21, 22. And then Division 4, Proof of Identity. We haven't made any revision either. Part 6, Evidence, no change. 20, uh, section 24, 25, no change. Disclosure of Information or Documents, Part 7. Sections 26, 27, 28, 29, um, and 30, no amendment. 31, 32. Specification of relevant person or relevant identity by chief executive in exercise of powers. We haven't made any revision to that either. And then the duration and explanatory note. Now, uh, section 33, we have made um, an amendment. We have made amendment based on the expiry date contained in the UN resolution. And that is, it will expire, the provisions will expire at midnight on 9th of December 2014. And in 33A, uh, we also uh, updated the resolution number 2128. Uh, did the, was the expiry date uh, specified in the past? Yes, in 2013 regulation. We said that it was stated is 11th of December 2013, and now it's 9th December 2014. That and follows the UN resolution. Explanatory note in point one. We uh, changed the name, uh, the the expiry date, and also the resolution number. Now is resolution 2128. Any questions? Now, if not, then we will go directly to the repeal regulation 2013. Now, this is a um, rather short regulation. In the 2013 regulation, apart from the financial sanctions, um, the others um, have come into effect on the 14th of March 2014. Now, the 2014 regulations also contain provisions relating to financial sanctions. So um, that's why the regulation 2013 can be repealed. There are two sections in this repeal regulation. First is that this regulation comes into operation on the 21st of March 2014, and the second is repealing the um, 2013 regulation. This is rather straightforward. Are you repealing the old one or replacing it with the new one? So for these two um, regulations relating to Liberia, uh, have any questions now? The legal advisor has changed. Uh, because we are, have three groups of sanction regulations um, being undertaken by the three 
um, different legal advisors. So, so, so that's why we have the change in the person. So let's now go to the next uh, group. First is is the um, sanctioned regulation Central African Ab Re Republica CITB CR seventy five uh, stroke fifty three stroke eight. Ms. Yin is an inland um, country in Le in Africa. Um, there have been ethnic tensions since 2013, and because the situation has deteriorated, so uh, in December 2013 and first of uh, January 2014, it have adopted the UNSCR 20, uh, 2127 and 2134, um, imposing embargoes on arms, uh, traveling, and financial sanctions, and so on. We have received uh, MFA instructions uh, earlier this year to implement respectively the UNSCR 2124 and 2134. And those regulations are based on the uh, UN regulations and we are going to implement the sanctions for one year. Now, in 2013, the Central African Republic ranked 180th among Hong Kong's trading partners, and total trade volume is just around $21 million. Now, uh, in terms of the um, types of goods and the volume of goods is rather uh, limited, so the sanctions will not have any major impact on Hong Kong's economy. So perhaps I will ask Mr. Wu to take us through the uh, details of the regulations. I have a question here. The trade volume is not... Uh, big, but what kind of goods are involved? Um, they are, their trade is mainly uh, re-export electronic um, or rather telecommunications equipment. So there, the, the trade doesn't have anything to do with um, ammunition and so on, So the and the trade volume is rather minimal. Uh, you have an explanatory note uh, in your paper, and that is that includes uh, telecommunications equipment, automobiles, and also meat as well, and precious and semi-precious stones. Well, you can uh, may I refer members to Annex E, um, and it lists our trade relations with the country and also major types of goods um, involved in imports and exports. M Madam Chair, you mentioned about um, in 2012, there, um, around 3% of the goods are um, meat or frozen meat. So it seems that the types of goods um, has uh, increased compared to um, the past. Well, you must uh, clarify this with the uh, business sector and the regulations may have an impact on their business. So the administration, have you made any contacts with the business sector or the trade sector? Actually, we have um, um, provided the information to the CNI panel of the electrical and also through the trade department we have also notified the relevant business sectors so they should be well aware of the uh, sanctions but since the um, trade volume um, is limited and the number of goods um, is uh, rather um, limited um, the although it has somewhat um, increased uh, than compared to the past, so I think the business sector is well aware of it, and they don't find a major problem. There aren't many operators in this trade. I think you can actually uh, locate them and notify them directly. So the administration, can you do a more thorough job on this, or else people? Um, would not be aware of the later sanctions or a legal advisor do you have any questions um on on this regulation relating to central african republic no right, so mr wu clause by clause scrutination there are already 34 sections 
and that has to do with uh, UN Sanction 2127 and 2134, and that includes arms embargo, travel ban, and also financial sanctions and so on. So when we formulated the regulations, we have also taken reference from similar sanctions in other regulations. The part one has to do with interpretation, and that has to uh, give definitions to um, certain terms. And that was uh, were drafted uh, based on um, um, similar provisions in other regulations. Are there any um, definitions which are unique to this uh, regulation? Now, in terms of R, uh, small arms, designated uh, personnel and identity, a person connected with the Central African Republic, and so on, these are well, these are similar definitions as in other um, regulations. Interpretation, any question? No. If not, then Section 2. Uh, sections 2 and 3 have to do with prohibition against uh, supply, sale, or transfer of certain goods or carriage of certain goods to certain designated individuals and entities, including ammunition. And the content of these provisions is uh, identical to that in other similar sanctions uh, or regulations. Section 4, prohibition against provision of certain assistance or training. Related to um, arms and ammunition. And that um, provision is similar to uh, uh, other provisions. As such provisions. Section 5, provision against making available funds, etc., or dealing with funds, etc. Again, um, similar to um, similar provisions that we've been using. Sections uh, 6 and 7, prohibition against entry or transit by certain persons or specified persons and um, exceptions to prohibition against entry or transit by certain persons, similar again to other similar pro provisions. Well, the specified persons are not uh, specified here, right? Yes, whenever we um, make such provisions, we would just say specified uh, persons without naming them. And because uh, the, the persons have already been named by the UNSC, and there is no need for the government uh, or the CE to um, make a separate gazetto on that. So it's uh, similar uh, to what we've been doing in the past. And when the, a separate gazetto by the CE is needed, uh, that is needed only when there are financial sanctions, in the case of financial sanctions. Now, if there are really names of people, um, if the members of the public wish to um, uh, find out, where, where can we uh, turn to? Well, it's on the website of the UNSC. So that has to do with uh, prohibiting people from entering or transiting Hong Kong. So I would like the administration, perhaps you can um, put the names on the relevant websites of the Hong Kong government. Say if um, Travel agents in Hong Kong may not know that they have to uh, browse through the UNSCR website. Now, actually, when we are working on the regulations um, related to the, the Republic of North Korea, we do have a, 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 a name list in front of us. All right, we will think about that. And as I said, the information is publicly available. But as I said, some travel agents may engage in certain business, and they, if they don't know that certain persons cannot um, have transit through Hong Kong, and they are um, arranging for, say, uh, travel arrangements, etiquettes for them, then it's not um, legal or appropriate. So on the local web page, that, that name list should be available, or else uh, they will be completely confused, uh, and they they will be at a loss as to what you're doing. Yes, we'll see if that can be done. Yes, we'll be taking this up again next time. So please come up with a paper telling us uh, where that will be dealt with or where they can find the information. All right? Clauses um, 8 to 10. Well, license for supply, sale, transfer, and so on for certain goods, including the supply, sale, or transfer of um, 
prohibited materials uh, to the Central African Republic or persons connected with the Central African Republic or to a destination for the purpose of delivery and uh, for um, humanitarian assistance and also for training purposes and also if it's uh, to is uh, funds uh, to the connected uh, or specific persons and so on for certain expenditures. So we have set out um, situations whereby licenses can be issued. Well, going back to the Liberia regulation, all right, clause seven is about the uh, prohibition of uh, persons uh, entering or transiting in Hong Kong. And in clause seven, you also refer to the former president. Uh, uh, Charles and uh, you name his name there. So, similarly, when you want to prohibit certain person from entering or transiting in Hong Kong, then uh, you should make sure that uh, uh, the approach is consistent. So, here I'm referring to former President Charles uh, Taylor's. So, uh, sorry, members, uh, for going back to the earlier regulation. So please be consistent. All right, coming back to the Central African Republic regulation, and then clause um, 11 um, is the provision of false information or documents for purpose of obtaining licenses and so on, and also the sanctions or the penalties. And then part 4, and then part 5, part, part 6, and Part 6, 7, and 8 is about a collection of evidence and also investigation powers and so on. And for these parts, they are consistent uh, with what we have been doing in recent uh, UNSC regulations. And then uh, clauses uh, 32 and 33, it says that uh, by Gazetto, um, in the Gazetta, the chief executive in council can specify that relevant persons or entities uh, uh, will have to be dealt with, and uh, that's consistent uh, with recent uh, UN sanction regulations. So it's about uh, the seizure of uh, vessels and ve uh, and vehicles and so on during the last term of the government. What Miss Margaret Ng and the then subcommittee have agreed uh, with the administration on certain uh, sample regulations or templates and. Uh, those have been in use uh, since then, unless there are major amendments, and then the administration will have to highlight uh, the areas where amendments have been made, and then our legal advisor will take it up with them as regards uh, seizure and confiscation of uh, vessels, uh, vehicles, and so on, as uh, those uh, have followed uh, the template. That's why they can be uh, uh, scrutinized uh, very expeditiously. With regard to the uh, expiry of the regulation uh, that will be on the 27th of January 2015. All right. If there are no questions, then we can move on to the next one is about uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo of the Congo regulation. Again, Ms. Yun. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, um, Congo is located uh, in the middle part of Africa, and since 2009, there have been um, internal conflicts and also armed conflicts. And given the situation in Congo in 20 since 2003, a number of uh, sanctions have been imposed uh, by the UNSC to um, impose sanctions against it, uh, including arms uh, embargo and also travel um, prohibition and so on. And as Congo continues to pose uh, threats uh, to international peace and so on, that's why in 20 in January 2014, um, Resolution 2136 was passed uh, to extend its sanctions against uh, DR Congo, and um, we have now come up with the uh, uh, regulation to tie in with the UNSCR 2136. With regard to the relevant regulation, um, in 2015, the 1st of, Jan 1st of February, it will be expiring. That's why in 2013, with regard to the, um, well, uh, Congo is uh, listed as uh, n number 116 in terms of um, uh, its uh, trading status with Hong Kong. That's why the uh, sanctions against uh, Congo would not pose uh, too much impact on Hong Kong, because if you look at the trading position, well, that has nothing to do with uh, arms and other sales. That's why uh, the quantity is also limited. All right, uh, concerning the background information, is there any, are there any questions? Legal advisor. 
concerning the uh, sanction regulation, is there anything that uh, you might wish to draw our attention to? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. On the um, Congo regulation, when compared to the 2013 uh, regulation against uh, Congo, well, when I tried to make the comparison, I noticed that other than the reference uh, to the UNSC and also the commencement date, which is different in two areas, I've also noticed that there are some differences, and that's why I'd like to ask the administration to explain that. Well, from what I can see is um, 8E and also 9D. If there are other provisions that are somewhat different from the previous uh, regulation, then I'd also like the administration to explain that to us. All right, so when we scrutinize um, clauses uh, 8 and 9, I'll invite Mr. Wu to highlight that. Other than that, if there are no concerns, then we will move on to the clause-by-clause -clause examination, and then we'll see if we can discuss the amendments there. Mr. Wu, yes, we can move on straight to the interpretation clause, and when compared to the 2013 regulation, the content is the same, other than the fact that uh, we have used the UNSC 2136, and that's to follow up on the latest uh, sanction by the UN um, on its sanction. Well, in 2013, we used uh, 2078, Resolution 2078. And then Clause 2, Prohibition against supply, sale or transfer of certain goods. And then Clause 3, Prohibition against carriage of certain goods. We have not made any change at all to those two. And then Clause uh, 4, Prohibition against provision of certain assistance, advice or training. We have not made any change to that either. And then Clause 5, Prohibition against making available funds, etc., or dealing with funds, etc. We have not changed that at all. Yes, you have followed the, um, the uh, template, yes. And then for Prohibition against entry or exit by certain persons, and the only change is to the specified person, and the resolution number has been updated uh, to Resolution 2136. So that's the latest uh, resolution under the UNSC. So. Uh, the person has to be um, easily identifiable in Hong Kong. And Clause 7, no change. And then Clause 8, as the legal advisor just said, we have newly added uh, 8E. So under 8E, the prohibited goods are intended solely for the support of or used by the African Union Re Regional Task Force, and that's in line with the latest uh, resolution by the UNSC. S so it's about the Regional Task Force. Uh, is there any definition about it? Madam Chair, I'll defer to the DFJ. Yes? Yes, uh, Ms. Fong? No, there isn't any definition about uh, the African Union Regional Task Force. Well, that's the only task force centre by the African Union region. That's why we do not have any specific definition for that. And you talk about the African Union Regional Task Force. Is that um, an official name? Yes. So that's deployed by the African Union against um, the Lord Resistance Army and also the um, uh, the uh, rebel force there. Yes, as the legal advisor has brought up just now, we have ad we have added to this 8D. It says that um, the prohibited goods can be provided in terms of uh, assistance, advice, or training. So that's under 9D. So the advice, uh, assistance, or training is intended solely for the support of or use by the African Union Regional Task Force. Under 9, there is another provision which says that uh, where uh, there are uh, non-lethal military uh, equipment uh, for uh, safety and so on uh, for humanitarian purposes, those, those would be allowed. But then since uh, this is about uh, uh, sale and uh, carriage and that that has nothing to do with uh, advice or training. And as you can see under 8.2c, 
we have already set out those things. That's why there is no need for us to repeat that in line. That's why that has been uh, deleted. So with the deletion of that clause, you would be adopting the same approach uh, in other uh, similar sanction uh, regulation. Yes, you're right, Madam Chair. For the area that I just uh, referred to, so long, well, uh, so long as that can be reflected uh, in a sale transfer or carriage, that's okay. And therefore, similar deletion will be made to future regulations. All right, any further questions? I'm not sure if I have um, omitted anything. So I, can I invite the Policy Bureau to be more careful where there are deletions of certain provisions? Please do give us a reason so that we can put that on record so that in future, if there are new members joining the subcommittee, they will understand why you have deleted certain provisions because if you look at CRTB CR 74, 53, 4, with regard to the deletion, you have not particularly highlighted that. So you haven't given us the reasoning. So have you t told us uh, the reasons? Yes, we can supplement uh, the information so that, uh, as the chair just suggested, uh, we can put it on record so that for future members they'll understand why we have done it. Because uh, you try to come up with um, a sample legislation and then in future regulations you just uh, follow that. All right, if you think that on this occasion it's um, better to delete certain clauses, so at least you will have to let us know whether or not it's in order and whether or not you have reflected the original intention or is it that uh, in the past uh, you have got that uh, superfluously. That's why you have now decided to adopt an alternative approach and you believe that that's a, that is a better way out. So you will have to explain that, yes, as I just said, I'll be giving um, a further information paper on that. And also on the license uh, uh, for uh, dealing with uh, certain funds and so on, and that's the same as um, the 2013 regulation and no change has been made. And then for um, uh, 11, it's a uh, provision of false information and so on, so no change has been made. And then part 4, that's, uh, there is only one clause, clause 12, there has been no change at all. And then on enforcement uh, is against um, vessels and uh, vehicles and so on. Basically, we have followed the 2013 regulation and no change has been made. Okay, so uh, part 4 is about identity proof. Um, once again, no change has been made. Madam Chair, so we can go all the way to clause 30 where some amendments have been made. So disclosure of um, information and so on. Well, miscellaneous, yes, that's clause 30. It says that the chief executive may by notice published in the Gazette specify as a relevant person or a relevant entity and so on and so forth with regard to the reference uh, to the UN sanction and is updated uh, to 2136. That's the latest uh, one. And also it sets out uh, the exercise of powers uh, by the chief executive no and no change has been made. And then 32 duration. We have followed the effective date um, of the UN sanction resolution. and. Uh, it spells out here that uh, it will be expiring at midnight on the 1st of February 2014 and under the old regulation is uh, 2014. So it's to reflect the latest uh, uh, validity of the UN sanction resolution. Okay, so so much for the um, DR Congo. So Secretariat, please jot that down for us because uh, we are doing this as a very repetitive exercise and as a result, uh, uh, members uh, might be more relaxed about them and they might lose their vigilance. And therefore, where there is a new drafting approach, I hope that members will understand it. And uh, even for myself, I don't want this to uh, happen because uh, we do have the sample legislation available and uh, it's uh, a very, very re repetitive exercise. That's why. I will often raise some um, areas where there have been new approaches with the Policy Bureau asking them to um, set down on uh, record uh, as to the reasoning behind this so that uh, we will not have any gap um, in between and then by the time when some new members join the Council, they may not be able to follow 
uh, and without the historical records, they will have difficulty following through this. And uh, and then uh, the provisional legislature has given this power to the uh, administration uh, for doing this, and we have no power to amend the legislation. That's why for this uh, routine procedure, the uh, level of involvement might be limited. But it doesn't mean that uh, we should uh, um, uh, abandon our duty. Mali. Next, we will go to the Somalia Amendment Regulation. Ms. Yun, please uh, give us a background to this, please. Somalia is in Eastern Africa. Since 1992, the UN, uh, in view of the conflicts and the casualties in the country, imposed uh, has uh, since imposed sanctions, including embargo on arms, travel ban, and financial sanctions. The um, Somalia Somalia is still um, posing. Uh, a threat to international peace and security, and in February and uh, March 2014, the UN Resolution 2025 and 2142 have been endorsed, and that would is extend um, the um, financial sanctions, arms embargoes, and so on and so forth. Now, in February and March 2014, we received two instructions from the MFA requesting the government to implement, respectively, the two resolutions, i.e., 2125 and 2142. In 2013, the uh, trade volume between the two places is only about $110 million, and the um, sanctions will not affect much the trade between Hong Kong and Somalia. And as for the um, amendment regulation, perhaps defer to Mr. Wu to uh, take you through that. First, our legal advisor, do you have anything um, that you should, uh, you think we should pay attention to? Have you uh, communicated with the administration on that? Now, on the amendment regulation, I noted that in the provisions about the licensing, uh, you have included the mentioning of the Somalian uh, government or administration, but that a definition is not given. Perhaps the administration can elaborate on the definition of the Somalian administration or government. Well, when we go to the clause by clause, we can ask the administration to uh, explain. Any questions from members? No. If not, then we go to clause by clause. On the UN sanctions Somalian regulation, we have provided a markup copy to facilitate members' um, uh, reading. And if and that is in Annex F, then with the permission of the Madam Chair, we can uh, go through it. Well, how come that we have a markup copy this time? Over the years, when there are amendments to regulations, we will provide a markup copy, like what we're doing uh, for this particular regulation. But for the previous two regulations, then. Uh, they are not amendments per se, but rather formulating a new regulation. Now, if we are going to provide a markup copy, the entire old regulation will be crossed out, and then a new regulation will <coughs> be provided. Now, and actually, in writing, we have explained uh, the kind of amendments uh, we have made, and the letter has been sent to the LegCo at the end of May. But then, Madam Chair, you said that maybe we should list out the differences between the repealed regulations and the new regulations, and we're more than happy to do that. But I just want to explain that uh, different situations were in different treatment, and but then we are willing to pay heed to your suggestions. For these uh, sanction regulations, we do have templates. Whenever there is amendment, then um, it will have an impact on the um, templates to be used later. Well, perhaps you may not use the name as a markup copy. Um, it's, well, the, the provisions are, are there all the time. So please uh, give us a comparison. 
Uh, Mr. Wu, um, close by close scrutiny. The first amendment has to do with uh, Section 8. Can we talk about the uh, Somalian administration or government? 8J. And also we add in a new case, Somali authorities in 8J. This is to reflect the Resolution 20, um, 2125, Paragraph 14, and 2140, Paragraph 2. And that have to do with um, um, embargo on arms. The latest revision, sir. The legal advisor has rightly pointed out that in J, we originally set the federal government of Somalia, and that is replaced by Somali authorities. And that is because the relevant UN resolution has made that change. Also, we have made the um, relevant inquiry with the relevant authority. At this stage, the federal government of Somalia or Somali authorities are the same. I mean, they have the same meaning. And we make the amendment because we want to follow exactly the wordings used in the UN resolution. Well, that's very confusing. Now, in sections 8 and 9, uh, you replace federal government of Somalia with Somali authorities. But then, immediately after that, the name federal government of Somalia is still there. Uh, the verb may not be diff uh, may not be the same in the two clauses because you're using the uh, the word development in one of those and the only thing you can develop is really the federal government and not the Somali authorities now um, would that create confusion in local legislation all along when we work on such sanctions regulations a major point of discussion is really to implement um, the relevant resolution. Do we have to follow word by word the wordings in the UN resolution, even if it means that it's going to create confusion in our local legislation? We have uh, studied the relevant amendments, and the principle really is to follow exactly the wordings in the UN resolution. We have uh, talked with D of J. And we don't think any confusion will be created as a result of the uh, amendment. But I note, um, Madam Chair, your views. Perhaps uh, we can go back and discuss again with the DFJ to see if um, anything further can be done. I think we have discussed this point for a long time. And Mr. Wu, you have courteously said that you will go back and study it again. I, I don't believe that you will come back to us with any new uh, ideas or proposals. Now, when we draft legislation to implement our international responsibilities, I think w there we should have a, a new approach or a change in our approach. Another point of discussion that we've been um, discussing so far is it uh, the case that we must have a, a regulation to implement a certain um, resolution by the UN. Are there any other approaches? Well, for some um, treaties, a regulation uh, uh, is appropriate. But then for those uh, cir uh, circumstances, we will not be um, implementing the resolution through an entire piece of regulation, but rather add them as a schedule to certain regulations. Dr. Kenneth Chen. Well, thank you for providing us with uh, much information on uh, misconception because of different approaches adopted. And if time permits, I think we should uh, discuss that further with the Policy Bureau because um, the um, foreign affairs is not within the ambit of the Hong Kong SARG. And for UN resolutions, um, they have to dealt first with the CPG uh, 
Therefore, the SARG is entrusted with the work of implementing the resolutions. So we are limited in our autonomy uh, because it has to do with foreign affairs. So, so perhaps it's because of this background that we have to uh, mirror exactly the wordings in the UN in our local legislation. Now, the federal government of Somalia has been changed uh, to Somali authorities. There may be different perceptions to the two uh, phrases. Well, I would like to speak on two aspects. Um, Somalia is a, a place with um, a lot of conflicts and and it is a great area as to what what what, what you call it, um, what name you you call the, the the government. So that's that's perhaps why the UN has come up with such an adjustment in view of the situation in um, that country. Now, now that's uh, when you look at the next phrase is really to support the Secretary General of the UN. SC in taking sanctions. So we have to um, look at, take into account the role of the Secretary General of the United Nations as well. So what we should focus on is not just whether it is going to be called Federal Government of Somalia. What we should also be focusing on the role and status of the Secretary General of the United States. Uh, of the United Nations before we um, consider any further sanctioned actions. Well, thank you, Dr. Chen, for um, giving us this good piece of advice because uh, this is such a, a place with uh, a lot of chaos and, and we don't know when a government will uh, be turned, uh, will be uh, toppled and, and another new government will come on board and whether it's internationally recognized and, and so on. So, I mean, that uh, makes good sense. No, um, unfortunately, this answer is not uh, provided to us by the administration, but rather Dr. Chen. I think uh, Mr. Dr. Chen is right in pointing out that the, the special licensing has to do not only with um, the um, Acts to uh, the behavior to suppress acts of piracy and armed robbery at sea, and the second condition has to be um, satisfied, and that is the Somali, Somali authorities have to notify uh, the Secretary General of the United States, and his approval is is given. On this particular point, I would like to ask the Policy Bureau to um, supplement in writing of the reasons for such a change. And the clerk can also note down um, Dr. Chen's um, point and our rationale for accepting such an amendment. So that should be written out clearly so that in future when um, other people are in this subcommittee, then they know what has gone on. Mr. Wu, please continue. In section nine, we have also made changes and we have added in uh, G and H. And that has to do with with paragraph 14, 2125 resolution and paragraph 22142. And that has to do with the latest amendment for the exception to the um, provision of assistance and training and so on. Lastly, section 32, um, subclause 2. Uh, we have added in sections A2K, 92H, um, special licensing conditions, and they will expire at midnight on the 24th of October 2014. And that is to reflect the paragraph 2 of resolution 2042. The expiry date is the same there. Any questions? If not, then we go to the sanction regulations relating to Yemen. We have our three legal advices today. Ms. Yin, please. 
Please take us through the UN sanctions Yemen regulation, the background. Yemen is an Arab country in Western Asia, neighboring Saudi Arabia, and the United Nations has been facilitating Yemen's political transition since 2011, and because it is um, posing a threat to international s security, and on the 26th of February 2014, it has adopted a sanction resolution, including travel ban and so on, and it will expire on the 25th of February 2015. And in March 2014, the CE received an instruction from the MFA requesting the government to implement the UNSC Resolution 2140. Yemen ranked 123rd among Hong Kong's trading partners, and the trade volume between the two places is around $200 million. And considering the um, limited uh, trade volume between the two places, the sanctions are not going to have an, a major impact of the trade between Hong Kong and Yemen. Now, as for the provisions relating to the Yemen regulation, perhaps I'll defer to Mr. Wu to take us uh, through that. Legal advisor, any special things to note about the um, sanction regulation? This is a brand new regulation, and it has to do with uh, financial sanctions and travel ban. And the way it is rec um, drafted is similar to other similar regulations in the legal service division. Doesn't have any special advice on this piece of regulation. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Wu, please walk us through the clause by clause examination. Yes, as the legal advisor has uh, pointed out, this is a brand new regulation, and in coming up with this uh, regulation, we have made reference to other similar sanction regulations, and therefore the provisions are more or less the same. And Clause 1 is interpretation with regard to definition of terms and uh, the way we have done it. Well, as I said, uh, it's very similar to the other pieces of legislation for similar purposes. That's why, well, there's been no reference uh, to arms and so on, because mainly it's about travel ban and also a financial assistance ban. And then Clause 2, prohibition against uh, making available funds, etc., or dealing with funds and so on. And um, the wording is similar to other similar pieces of legislation, so it's consistent. And then Clause 3, prohibition against uh, entry or transit by certain persons. And the clause is very similar to other similar pieces of legislation, so it's the same. So for as far as the local government is concerned, uh, in the local government's uh, web page concerning the specified persons in the U.S. Uh, resolution, please do set that out. Uh, yes, um, on the Yemen regulation, in fact, the relevant committee has not yet come up with a list of specified persons. Clause 4, exceptions to prohibition against entry or transit by certain persons. So these are the exceptions. Once again, you don't have any spec you don't have any list from the UN yet. No, we don't. So clause three is about the prohibition um, against certain persons uh, from entering or transiting in Hong Kong, and basically they have not come up with a list of specified persons uh, who be banned from entering or transiting in Hong Kong. And then for clause five, uh, license for making available funds and to certain persons and so on, for example, some uh, to, for meeting some basic uh, needs and also for providing funds uh, to certain entities and so on. But then I also like to point out that uh, the relevant UN committee has yet to come up with the list of entities or persons uh, where uh, financial sanctions will have to be imposed against them. Against them. But then basically, you follow the wording in the template, right? Yes, it depends on the relevant uh, requirement under the UN license, but then as far as we can see concerning the requirements when compared to other sanctions by the UN, they are very similar. What I'd like to know is this is not the first time that we have seen um, this drafting method. Yes, uh, we have adopted uh, the approach in a template, yes. Next, uh, Clause 6. Provision of false information or documents for purpose of obtaining licenses. So there is um, this is an offence, and the, is it consistent uh, with other pieces of regulation? 
plus 7 and 8. They are enforcement issues and uh, the content is consistent uh, with the UN sanction resolution. And then clauses 9 and 10. Again, it's about detention of documents, cargoes, or articles seized, and also disclosure of information or documents. And then 11, 12, and 13, they are miscellaneous uh, matters and offenses. Basically, they are consistent uh, with UN sanctions regulations. And 14, too. Well, 14, that has uh, featured in other sanction regulations, right? Well, clause 14 in other regulations uh, that has uh, been featured too. So basically, the content is uh, consistent and the same. 15. Specification of relevant person or relevant entity by chief executive by notice published in a Gazette. So the chief executive may specify that a relevant person or relevant entity can uh, uh, be specified. So that is the power of the chief executive, and uh, that also has been featured in other similar pieces of legislation. And then 16.2. And then 17 is the, due, is the validity of this regulation. It will expire at midnight on the 25th of February 2015. So much for my presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, so we are finished with all the five uh, sanction regulations scrutiny. Thank you very much. So Mr. Wu and Ms. Yun, please remember that for the issues that we have just raised, uh, please do provide us with supplementary information paper. All right, thank you very much. So um, today's meeting is adjourned. Thank you.